Good morning, Ocean Rangers, and thanks for joining us for another Summer Kids Club this morning. My name is Kaya, and I am coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific. And this morning, we get to talk all about one of our coolest animals here at the aquarium, and probably in general in the ocean. We are going to be talking all about octopus. Yes! All right. Now, if you have any questions about um, octopus while you're watching, then please feel free to text in 562-286-1838. Or if you'd like to share any of those observations that you're making while you're watching, I would love to hear from you. I'd love for you to participate. Uh, but you don't have to text in. You can also shout out any answers or you can draw or write anything. There are lots of ways for you to join us today. And of course, if you're watching this later, then you can always uh, email us at live at lbaop.org and one of our educators will be happy to answer your question. Uh, just make sure if you are texting that you get a parent's permission because uh, data text rates do apply. And I think that's all I, all of my announcements before we get started thinking about octopus. Uh, so we're first going to be thinking all about what makes an octopus an octopus? What are those very unique octopus features? right? So if you have any ideas about those, feel free to let me know right off the bat. And then we are going to be thinking about octopus adaptations because octopus have some really unique and specific adaptations that help them survive really well in the ocean. And if you're not sure what an uh, adaptation is, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get started thinking about those. And then we're going to take a closer look at some of our octopus that we have here at the aquarium and do a little bit of a deeper dive into that specific species. Okay, with that, everybody, I think it's time for us to get started thinking about an octopus. I'm also not alone here in the studio. I have Allie, who is busy pulling up an awesome picture of an octopus for us to take a look at and start making some observations about. And I have Alicia, who is ready to take any of those questions and observations that you might like to share with us, Ocean Rangers. So let's get started thinking about what is an octopus? What are those unique features that let us know that we are looking at an octopus? A oh, perfect picture. Oh, this is awesome. I haven't even seen this picture yet. Thank you, Miss Allie. So, Ocean Rangers, when you're looking at this, what stands out to you? What are the things that you see here that let us know, ooh, octopus? Now, the first feature, oh, Allie is saying these things. Do you guys see? What do, what do you think she means by those? Do you think she might mean those arms there? Probably. So, octopus are definitely known for having those eight arms right? Um, but actually, before I talk about those eight arms, I actually really want to get started talking about a bigger feature that unites octopus with some of its other relatives as well. So octopus are what we call invertebrates. Have you heard that word before? I actually want to show you in case it's a new word for you. Invertebrate. Now this might seem like a big word, but really this means something pretty simple. All this means is that um, invertebrates are animals that don't have bones inside of their body. So if you wanna take a moment and feel your backbone, you might feel it has some bumps there. So all of those bumps you're feeling are called vertebrae. So because we have a backbone, we're called vertebrates. Animals like octopus don't have that backbone. They don't have any bones. So they're called invertebrates. And there are many, many, many animals out there that don't have bones. But octopus are one of the very special invertebrates because they're very, very intelligent. They are considered one of the most intelligent animals in general, and especially for invertebrates. Now, why is not having bones, why is that special or helpful for octopus? Now, a lot of invertebrates have hard outsides of their body, and that sort of helps keep them safe. So if you think of animals like clams or mussels, they all have those hard shells, right, to protect them. Or even animals like crabs and lobsters have exoskeletons. So again, that's sort of hard outside to help keep them safe. But do octopus have that? Not at all, right? So what do they do instead? Well, because they don't have any bones, they are able to squeeze into tiny crevices like we see this octopus doing here. Look at it. It's all smushed in between those rocks there. Oh, and there's a great close-up. We can see it's got its arm sort of going 
everywhere here, right? It's really stretched out, really able to utilize lots of different spaces. And this is also one reason why octopus have a reputation in the aquarium world for being escape artists because they are able to sneak through tiny areas where we might think, oh, an animal, it can't get through there. That is way too small. Well, guess what? These octopus, because of their bodies, because they don't have these bones, and because of their intelligence, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later, they are able to really move through those. So that's why we have to be extra careful when we are designing their homes so that they are not able to escape and they feel very comfortable inside their home. So that's one really important feature of octopus. They are invertebrates. Now, Cora is asking a question, are octopus arms and legs sticky? Great question, Cora. So maybe we can take a look at that picture of those arms again and talk a little bit about those. Now, octopus are known for having how many arms? Two? Ten? No, eight arms, of course. And that is where they get their name from. Octo means eight. And if we look at their arms, we can see there's all this other stuff on there. What are those? So you'll notice there's all these tiny little circles, right? So these are called suction cups. And if you are familiar with suction cups in your everyday life, they are able to hold on to things, right? They create a suction. And that's exactly what their suction cups do as well. They are incredibly sticky. So yes, Cora, these arms are very, very, very sticky. Um, and this is really helpful for them in a lot of different ways. Can you think of why it might be helpful for them to have all of these sticky suction cups? Well, one thing it helps them with is grabbing onto their prey, right? So these are carnivores, which means they eat other animals. So they do hunt for them and they're able to hold on to their prey really tightly using their suction cups. But their suction cups are not just sticky. So they're unique in another way as well. Their suction cups actually allow them to taste things. So as they're moving around, oh, great image. So we can really see this is our giant Pacific octopus uh, who's moving around in his exhibit. And we can see he's using those suction cups to stick on. Now, do we notice anything different or anything unique that it's doing with its suction cups as well? So one thing that I'm seeing is that all of these suction cups are moving independently of one another. So they don't all have to move in the same direction at the same time. So they can move in lots of different ways using all of these suction cups. And that's especially helpful if you think about it, if they're trying to capture a prey that might be moving around really quickly. Well, guess what? They have all of these little suction cups that can help them grab it and, you know, eat it then. <laughs> So not only do their suction cups move independently of one another, but their arms do too. So we can see its arms are moving in every which way, which is one thing I think is so fun to watch octopus move. It's really unpredictable. It's not like they have a body shape like a fish, which is going to go in this one predictable direction. They move like this, right? They sort of move all around using their arms to sense the world around them. Now you will notice that I keep using the word arms. It's very natural to look at an octopus and all of these arms and think maybe tentacles. Those tend to be two different terms that we use interchangeably when we're looking at these sorts of features, arms, tentacles. Um, but there is a difference between these two that I wanted to highlight so we can learn a little bit about what we mean when we say arm versus tentacle. So here's a picture of an arm and here's a picture of a tentacle. What do you see? What looks the same and what looks different to you? Well, one thing I notice about both of them is that they are both, they both have those suction cups, right? But they have them in different locations. So you see that the arm is covered in suction cups, whereas the tentacle only has them at the tip. Now, why do you think that might be? Why, how might an animal that has tentacles use them differently than an arm? So when we're thinking about arms and tentacles, typically tentacles are a feeding appendage, or in other words, a part of the animal's body that they use to help them catch their food. Now an arm is used in many, many other different ways. So 
Octopus don't have tentacles. They do use their arms to help them catch their food, but a number of other animals like their relatives, such as squid or cuttlefish, have tentacles that they use specifically for catching their food. And we actually have a great video that can show us, ooh, what is this animal doing? And strike. Now this is a cuttlefish and those are the tentacles. And we can see, oh, it's very excited. I can see it changing its color. This poor little crab doesn't have a chance, my friends. And it strikes. So having um, those suction cups at the end of those tentacles is really what allows them to grab their food just like that. Now octopus feed similarly to cuttlefish. They are, oh, here's another picture of a cuttlefish. I do think they're very, very cute. Um, and we can see some of the similarities between octopus and cuttlefish because of those appendages. So they do both have arms and tentacles. They also have tentacles. And we see the eyes. And then we see this part right here. Okay, so what is that? Um, that's the next feature I wanna talk a little bit about. Um, so when we look at, maybe we can look at, there we go. So here's our, our octopus again. This is our giant Pacific octopus. So we see again, the arms covered in those suction cups. And then we see that they have heads, right? So they have eyes. Now, uh, other relatives of octopus and squid and cuttlefish, um, they're all in a group of animals called mollusks. Um, so that means they all have those really soft bodies, but their relatives, like the clams and mussels, they don't have eyes. They don't have brains at all. So octopus and their relatives are really unique because they do have those eyes and their brains, right? So they do have faces like we think of. Now, it's easy to think that that big part is like full of their brain, right? But their brain is not that big, my friend. So that this part of their body right here is called the mantle, and it actually holds all of their organs. So not just their brains, but it has their hearts and their stomachs and really everything. But I do want to take a moment to talk about their eyes here because octopus have really incredible vision. That is one of their very unique features. So their eyes are complex, just like ours. They're designed in a similar way, which means that they can see shapes they can see um, color even. Now for a long time, scientists didn't know that they could see color. They thought they were colorblind, which is pretty incredible considering um, that octopus are known for camouflaging and changing color. I see that Cora asked about if they can camouflage and the answer to that is yes. And the reason, and I'll be talking a little bit more next about how they are able to do that. Um, but I just wanted to point out that their eyes are able to see color just in a very different way than us. All right, I see a few more questions have come in. Ah, so Shinja is wondering, how do octopus breathe? And this is actually a perfect video to sort of demonstrate that. Now, even though octopus are invertebrates and they are not related, they're not closely related to fish at all, they do breathe in the same way. They have gills. We just can't see their gills like we can on a fish. So their gills are inside their body. And so what they are able to do is they pull water in through their mantle here, which is what we can kind of see it doing. And then they push it out through a part of their body called the siphon, which is like a little tube. So oh, here's a great picture here, a great video. So we can see this, this little tube right here is called the siphon. And you can see it's pumping water through their system and the water pumps over their gills and they're able to pull oxygen out of the water using their gills. And this is also how they move. So I talked a little bit about how they're like, Ooh, no, no, like this moving around, but they actually um, use water jet propulsion to help propel them through the water. So here's a video of a squid doing this. And they're again, more direct in their movements, um, but it's, it's the same system. So they pull water into their mantle here and then they push it out their siphon. Now squid have what's a remnant of the shell. They have a pen, which helps give their body this shape. Octopus don't have that at all. So that's why they're able to move a little bit more freely. But again, it is the same system of moving. Great question, Shinja. And Valerio and Hyro are wondering how many suction cups do octopus have? Excellent question. It does, it is gonna depend on the type of octopus we are talking about, but um, because there's 
small ones, big ones, medium sized ones. So this is the giant Pacific octopus, which is the largest octopus out there. And they have about 250 suction cups per arm, which means they have about 2000 suction cups. Oh my goodness, my friends, my ocean rangers, that is a whole lot of suction cups, especially when we think about how strong each of those suction cups are, because any guesses? How much do you think they can pick up with one of those suction cups? Hmm. Well, this might be hard to believe, but each one of those suction cups is capable of lifting 10 pounds. Oh my goodness. So if you were to lift up a 10 pound weight, it's kind of a lot. And so when we think about how strong this octopus is, that is pretty incredible. Great question. And Valerio and Jairo are also wondering about how many species of octopus there are. There are about 300 species out there and they are found in waters worldwide. So there are uh, octopus that are found in tropical waters and there are deep water octopus like the deep uh, big eye octopus and even the giant pacific octopus can be found in deep waters of up to 300 feet so octopus are really able to you know live in environments around the world that is how amazing their adaptations are and speaking of adaptations i want to talk a little bit more about some of these adaptations uh, so, but before we jump into that, I see that Valerio and Hyro are wondering, how big is the giant squid? And I love this question. I love, this is, okay, so this is a picture of the Humboldt squid, which is another example of a deep water squid. And actually, since we're looking at the Humboldt squid, um, what's really unique about their suction cups is they actually have teeth all over their suction cups whoa so they have adapted even further and this helps them um, really be able to take advantage of their environment of the deep water so having those teeth around the suction cups definitely helps them uh, catch their prey pretty amazing um, but how big is the giant squid uh, the largest one that has been measured was 59 feet i think we have a picture in there that can give us a, a reference I, that's about the size of a school bus if i'm remembering correctly so that is a really, really, really big squid. Okay, hold on. We'll see if we can find a picture. But if not, it's really big. And what's really amazing about that is there have only ever been two video recordings. So this is a very elusive animal that we are still learning so much about. So there is so much research that still needs to be done. So who knows? Maybe there's an even bigger squid out there. But we'll see. For now, it's about 60 feet. Okay, we think we got it. Okay, well here, here we go. Giant squid, about 60 feet long. All right, and so I see one more question that is a from Concha that's gonna really launch us into thinking about some more, uh, some more about octopus adaptations. So Concha is wondering what colors do octopus come in? They come in all sorts of colors, Concha. It is hard to even give like name all of the colors and patterns. They um, and it's especially hard because one of octopus most unique adaptations is their ability to color change and really camouflage with the environment around them. So for example, our P giant Pacific octopus is typically red or dark maroon, but it can change its colors. So how do we say for sure what its real true color is? And there are some octopus that have octopi that have really amazing ranges in their ability to change colors. Now, how are octopus able to do this? And really, it's not just octopus. Um, cuttlefish and squid can also change their colors. I want to give them a little bit of credit there too, because I think octopi get all of the credit when it comes to color changing and um, camouflaging and color changing. And really, it's this whole family that can do this. So octopus are able to change their colors to blend in perfectly to their environments um, using a very special skin cell that we call chromatophores. And this is a image of what chromatophores sort of look like. Now these are squid chromatophores. And what does it look like? It kind of looks like they're blinking, right? And that's a one way to think about it. So all these, um, what we're looking at are, these are pigments, so different colors in these little almost like sacks. And so when an octopus or a squid wants to change its color, it can open and expand these skin cells to blend into their environment. So for example, if this animal wanted to blend into a white environment, then it would close all of these different colors that you see blinking right now completely, and then all we would see is the white. And if it wanted to become pink, then it would open up all of those pink cells and it would become 
pink. I like to think of it as like if you had a balloon full of paint and if you squeeze the balloon, then more of that paint color would come to the top and it would be a little bit more visible. Whereas if you let it go, it would shrink down. And they have tons of these cells all over their body and they can change them, open them and close them in milliseconds. They are able to change colors incredibly fast. Thank you, Miss Allie. This is an amazing video watching an octopus change its color. Oh, whoa, but I see it's doing something else there, Ocean Rangers. Do you see what else it's doing? It didn't just change its color, it changed its texture too. So let's take a look again. So I see it looks very, very smooth and red. Now it's settling down. And it looks like all of these pokey things are coming out of it. And it's now blending in with the reef. Now, how is an octopus able to do that? Well, this is one of their amazing adaptations. They not only have these chromatophores, which is what allows them to change color, they have things on their skin that help them change texture as well. This is called papillae, which is kind of a big word, but all it means is that they are able to control their skin to change texture, which means they can elongate it or make it look bumpy and small, or they can make it look really pointy. And again, they are able to change those um, to blend in with their environment very, very, very quickly. So that took place in seconds. So they have these two features on their skin that really allow them to camouflage, which is pretty amazing. Oh, did you see that one? That one seemed to come out of nowhere. <laughs> so they are very often called masters of disguise. And that is because of these chromatophores and papillae. All right, so Jihoon is wondering, can all octopus change colors? And to the best of my knowledge, yes, they all have chromatophores. Um, so they might not all have the exact same range of chromatoph of ch changing color, uh, but they do all have that ability. And Valeria and Hyro are wondering, how do octopus sleep? Well, many octopus uh, will find dens to hide in or crevices to hide in just like this. And they have to do this because remember, they don't have a hard shell or any sort of hard exoskeleton to keep them safe. They have this really soft body, which allows them to move in lots of different ways. But when they're sleeping, they have to make sure that they are very hidden so that they are not eaten. Um, you know, that's, that's their way of staying safe. So they'll find a den to sleep in. Uh, Cora is wondering, do they have ears? Oh, good question, Cora. Um, it kind of looks like they might have ears when we're looking at their siphon and their mantle. This is another great close-up look at their faces, uh, but they don't have ears. Instead, they have an organ called a statocyst, which um, allows them to still hear, but uh, it's not an ear like we have. So it is a different type of organ. Really great question, Cora, thank you. And Rumi is wondering if the octopus loses an arm or a suction cup, can they grow back? And the answer to this is yes, they can grow back. They are able to regenerate. Um, we've had that, we've seen that here, even at the aquarium. It can take some time for them to grow back. So you might see some stubby arms sometimes on octopus. So if you see that, that might mean they've lost an arm for some reason and uh, will take some time to grow back. Oh, amazing video of our giant Pacific octopus exploring his exhibit there using all of those suction cups. Now, I really wanna take a moment to talk about another uh, really great adaptation or something we really think about when we think about octopus, and that's their intelligence. So when we think of intelligence, what does that mean for an octopus? Well, something that we've observed and spent time studying is that they are problem solvers. They are able to get, um, get into puzzles, get into spaces to find food. They are really able to, you know, be escape artists, so figure out ways to get out of their enclosures. And one of the ways that they're able to do this, one of the reasons why we know they're so intelligent is how their brain works. So again, when we look at their mantle, it's easy to think, oh, They've got a big giant brain up there, right? It's full, filling up that mantle. But really what's happening is they actually have a pretty small brain there and it looks like a little donut actually. And then they have neurons or brain cells throughout all of their arms, which is really hard for us to imagine. Can you imagine having sort of our brains in our hands here? 
it's really hard for us to imagine, but really what that allows octopus to do is not only are these arms moving independently, but they're also um, taking in the world independently with their arms. They're able to sort of sense things and then make decisions. It's pretty amazing. And we have a video here that we can show of one of our octopus actually doing some of that problem solving behavior. Oh, so this is a red octopus. And what do we see it doing? It looks like it's going inside this box here. Oh, it's so cute. Um, oh, so here we have some shrimp that's now being put into this box, which is a nice yummy snack for an octopus. And what do you think that octopus is going to do? So we see our little red octopus here. Now you can see it's probably able to sort of smell and sense things using those arms and woof, flopping it into the, into the tub there. Oh, now it's gonna try and figure out how to get in there to get that shrimp, that nice tasty snack. So this is what we call enrichment for our octopus. So we know they're really intelligent. So giving them a puzzle to get their food is something that's really stimulating for them and also something they would have to do in the wild. So here at the aquarium, we're providing really great care for them and giving them their food, but in the wild, they would have to find their food, right? And so by putting their food sometimes in boxes like that, that's like something to help them think and figure it out. And that just enriches their life, which is really important, of course, to us here at the aquarium. So that's just one little example of um, octopus intelligence. And there are many examples out there. All right, my oh, ocean rangers, this time just sped by. So in our last five minutes, I want to take a moment and talk a little bit more about our giant Pacific octopus and think about some of the amazing things about this octopus before we sign off. Now we've started talking a little bit about it when we were thinking about its suction cups. But remember I said, this is the largest octopus out there. So how big is that? What does that mean? So giant Pacific octopus are known to be on average about 16 feet long. So all of its arms spread out up to 16 feet across. That is like three of me. I know you don't know how tall I am, but so 16 feet is pretty wide. And they are also pretty heavy. They can be about 20 to 100 pounds. So this is a very large octopus that's out there. And they're found off our coast. So this is, they are, you know, giant Pacific octopus. They're found along our coast all the way up north around Alaska and Japan as well. So they prefer colder waters. And this is our current giant Pacific octopus doing some exploring. Oh, and this is such a great view of their eyes too. So I mentioned their eyes are really unique and their pupils.
All right. Welcome back, Ocean Ranger. So I'm just going to wrap up by, again, talking about this beak here that they have. Um, so they have this beak, which really allows them to crunch into things that have that hard outside. They also have something else. They actually produce a toxin in their salivary glands that helps them um, eat their prey as well. So again, another pretty unique adaptation that these cephalopods have that allow them to eat lots and lots of different things out there. All right, Ocean Rangers, I hope you enjoyed talking all about octopus with me this morning. You guys had some amazing questions, and I hope you will continue to learn about octopus after this program is over. There is an activity for you to do, which I am now blinking on, but it is, I'm sure, a Oh, that's right. You can make a handprint octopus. So do some art and learn a little bit more about them. And Ocean Rangers, I hope you also tune in with us again tomorrow at 11 a.m. for another amazing program for the Summer Kids Club. We also have some more programs this afternoon that I hope you'll tune in for. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for joining us this morning.